Item number 3785 Level 3 Confidential Containment Class Euclid Disruption Class Blam Risk Class Danger Special Containment Procedures The access point to SCP-3785 is to be barricaded and monitored by automatic surveillance equipment. Individuals attempting to access SCP-3785 are to be apprehended and turned over to local authorities. Foundation personnel are not to pass the established 1.6 km marker unless required for testing. SCP-3785 is a location accessible only by a dirt road leading off of Georgia Highway 166. Attempts to access SCP-3785 by any means other than this road will invariably result in being unable to find SCP-3785 at all. Individuals who stray off of the dirt road and attempt to return to it will be unable to locate it again. The road cannot be accessed by air. The road is approximately 2 km in length and exits into SCP-3785. SCP-3785 is a roughly 90 m wide, indeterminately long section of clear-cut hills, bordered on either side by a thick forest, through which large high-voltage power line stanchions run. It is perpetually night within SCP-3785 and stays a consistent 22.5 degrees Celsius. Crisscrossing SCP-3785 are numerous dirt tracks, such that an off-road vehicle might use them for recreational purposes. Several crude wooden signs bearing the words Jasper's Hill with an arrow pointing north dot the dirt pass across SCP-3785. Attempting to travel north with an SCP-3785 is extremely hazardous due to the terrain, which becomes increasingly difficult to navigate as the hills and valleys dramatically increase in size and complexity to the point of impossibility. Because of this, exploratory teams have been unable to reach the north end of SCP-3785. SCP-3785-1 is the group designation for a white, late 1980s Chevrolet Blazer on a lifted suspension, and its driver. The true nature of SCP-3785-1 has not yet been determined. Though information gathered within SCP-3785 has identified the driver of the vehicle as Jasper, of Jasper's Hill. SCP-3785-1 is capable of easily navigating the impossible terrain of SCP-3785, and seemingly does so to stalk and pursue individuals who become lost within SCP-3785. Addendum 3785.1 Discovery the existence of SCP-3785 was part of a well-known folktale in the region, which typically told of three children who become lost in the woods and enter a dark clearing called Jasper's Place. The children then become lost and are pursued by an unseen individual who eventually finds them and hangs them upside down at the end of the story. However, it was not until a group of twelve young adults disappeared under mysterious circumstances in the area that Foundation personnel became involved. After three weeks, one of the individuals was found nearly two kilometers from the entrance to SCP-3785 in a state of severe shock. The survivor, a 20-year-old black male from Villa Rica, Georgia, managed to communicate to first responders that he was still being pursued by Jasper and that the other missing individuals had all been hung upside down. At the sight of headlights from nearby vehicles passing by, the individual began to panic and scream about Jasper having found him and being unable to hide, and had to be sedated. After law enforcement officials were unable to access SCP-3785 by any means other than the dirt access road described by the survivor, and once the anomalous characteristics of SCP-3785 were discovered, Foundation personnel from Atlanta worked to contain the scene and administer amnestics as necessary, while working to prepare a team to attempt to find the remaining missing persons. Addendum 3785.2 Exploration Log 1 Note, The following is the audio transcript of an exploratory attempt within SCP-3785 by three members of MTF D-15, County Line, D-15 Teeter, Jackknife, 
and Norse. The purpose of their mission was to ascertain the location of and recover eleven missing individuals. Begin log. Alright y'all, let's go. It's getting dark in here. Yeah, Command, I can confirm it's starting to get dark. Not like we got too much tree cover, but like it's just night time. Can you confirm the time? Copy that, Teeter. It is currently 1405 hours, local time. That's what I thought. Way too dark for this time of day. Team continues on for an additional two kilometers before reaching the opening in the SCP-3785. You guys hear that? Yeah, that's freaky. It's really quiet in here. All we can hear is the wind. And the occasional bird. And it's really fucking dark. Copy that, team. Proceed with caution. Team activate your shoulder-mounted lights, and proceed north across the clearing. Command, status report. Copy, Teeter. We're in some big clearing here, like you see where they got power lines strung, only there are trees on its end, and it's hard to make out what's much further north than where we are. There are stars in the sky, but they're pretty dim and, uh, not any that I'm familiar with. We can see some really faint lights up ahead too, and a lot of hills, some rough dirt tracks. Nothing particularly unusual right now. Wish we'd brought some vehicles, though. Going to be hard to get around here. Copy, Teeter. Continue on as far as you can safely, and return when you feel you can't advance any further. Copy that. Team continues on for a short time. Look over here. Footprints. Probably a few different sets. Think these are our missing kids? Hard to say. Looks pretty fresh, though. Huh. Check that out. What? That sign. Command. We've got a sign here that says Jasper's Hill, and it's got an arrow pointing north on it. Copy that, Norse. Anything else unusual where you are? Negative. Looks pretty clear. Copy. Carry on. Team continues north, passing several other similar signs and what appear to be small campsites and remnants of fires at the top of hills. On the top of a particularly tall hill, the team pauses. You see that out there? Where? Yeah, way over there. Is that a car? Sorta of looks like it, doesn't it? It's not moving very fast. Command, the landscape here is getting really unusual. The hill we're on top of is taller than it should be, and it drops off pretty dramatically past here. I can see… shit, uh, maybe a half dozen other unusually large hills past here? And past that, maybe three or four clicks out, there are some headlights. They're just sort of creeping along out there. Hey, they've stopped. So I think we're going to need to start to backtrack, see if there are any side roads away from here, or… Hang on. Look. Uh, Command? Those lights just flashed at us. It's turning. It's coming towards us. Copy that. How far away is this vehicle? Sort of hard to judge. The landscape gets really strange past this point. I think it's pretty far away. It's… The bird noise. It stopped. There's something else there now. What is it? It's like a person making cat noises, or like, mirror mirror, just over and over again. I don't know where it's coming from. Copy that, Teeter. Go ahead and head back. We're going to see about getting you some vehicles before trying this again. Affirmative. Thank God, my feet are fucking killing me. Team proceeds to head back towards the access point. Teeter, over here. There's something by this tree. Yeah? It's a cell phone. Huh. Yeah. Go ahead and grab that. We'll let the lab process it. Anybody seen those lights in a while? Not since we came back down that ridge. That weird cat sound is gone, though. Finally. Hang tight. I can hear something else. You hear that? What is that? I don't know, honestly. It's really weird. It's like I can just make it out. Yeah. That's weird. It's like it's really close to us, but I can barely hear it. It's 
muffled, sounds sort of like a lot of… Oh fuck, look up there! Oh my god. What? Shit? The headlights! Run! Turn off your lights! Run! Teeter? Teeter, what is it? That noise! <laughs> the power lines! They're on the power lines! The kids we were looking for, they're hung upside down above. It's right behind us. Copy. We have an extraction team ready at the access point. Teeter, do you read us? Engine noise, then shouting, and then silence. Fuck! D-15 team, do you copy? Silence. Do you copy? A short time passes in silence as Command attempts to re-establish communication with the D-15 team. Come on! We're almost there! D-15, do you copy? Command? We read you. What happened? It hit Jackknife and drove into the woods. We heard a voice as it came near us, and it was talking to us, but we don't think it could see us. It's gone back over the ridge now, and… I can't see it. Jack? Jack! Repeat. Jackknife is MIA? Affirmative. Command. I think we found the missing subjects too, but… I don't think they're recoverable. We need to get Jack. We'll stay here until… Negative, Teeter. Proceed to the extraction point. Let's get you out of there. We'll get another team in to recover Jackknife. Remaining members of D-15 team are successfully recovered at the access point. Remaining team members are in good health aside from minor scrapes and bruises, and signs of stress. The cell phone discovered by the D-15 team is confirmed to have belonged to one of the missing individuals, and information recovered from the device is available below. End log. Addendum 3785.3 Exploration Log 2 Note, The following is an audio-video transcription of logs taken by members of the Atlanta 9 Dirty Birds Extraction Team. The Atlanta 9 team was prepared to extract the D-15 team in the event of a critical breakdown of the mission. The Atlanta 9 team was mobilized shortly after the successful extraction of the two remaining members of the D-15 team. The team consisted of three members, Atlanta 9 Sherman, Diego, and Junipero. Begin Log We have reached the clearing. Roger. Jackknife locator is reading a distance of 400 meters. Be aware of the hostile, unidentified entity that attacked the D-15 team. Roger. Let's go. Atlanta 9 team proceeds forward quickly, following the trail identified by D-15 teeters. From Diego's shoulder-mounted camera, dim stars are visible in the sky above. In the distance, engine sounds can be faintly heard. Jack? Jack, can you hear us, buddy? We're coming to get you. Muffled noises. Extraction team, be advised we are receiving communications from Jackknife. Roger. The team continues forward for several more minutes. As they come over a large hill, the power line stanchions become visible. Strung across the high tension lines are numerous figures, bound in ropes, hanging upside down by nooses from the lines. The majority of the figures are unmoving. One figure is struggling violently. At the base of the stanchion is SCP-3785-1. Fuck. Alright. We need to get up that tower. I'm going to leave the truck away. You two get up the tower and recover Jackknife. Then we'll rendezvous back at the extraction point. Give me the heads up as soon as you've got him out, because I'm going to book it out of here. You got it. Atlanta 9 Sherman separates from the group. Following the crest of the hill. He moves further away from the stanchion and SCP-3785-1. As soon as Atlanta 9 Diego and Junipero are in position, Atlanta 9 Sherman lights a flare. Over here, you cocksucker! There is the sound of distorted laughter and high-pitched screeching as SCP-3785-1's engine revs loudly and the entity moves away from the stanchion and towards Atlanta 9 Sherman. As soon as the entity is over the hill, Atlanta 9 Diego and Junipero moves towards the stanchion and begins to scale it. As they do, the writhing figure wrapped in rope and caught in a noose above becomes more animated. 
In the brief instance it is visible on Diego's camera. The eyes of D-15 Jackknife are visible, though the rest of his face is obscured by rope. As the two men climb, more of the surrounding area becomes visible. From their vantage point, the world beneath them is a single line of clearing and similar power lines amidst the world covered in dark forest. The sky above them, still black and darted with dim stars, appear to shimmer somewhat. Further away, the ground appears extremely distorted and twisted, looping up on itself and twisting over in ways that do not conform with standard geometry. Eventually, both Atlanta 9 Diego and Junipero reach the top of the stanchion. Using a rope to secure himself, Junipero slides out towards Jackknife. Hang on, Jack. Give me just a second to cut through this, and we'll be out of here. Junipero produces a serrated knife and begins to saw the length of rope. From Diego's point of view, Jackknife appears to be watching Junipero intently. Below, the sound of engine revving can be heard in the trees followed shortly afterwards by a small explosion, later determined to be a grenade thrown by Atlanta 9 Sherman. Suddenly there is a low, rumbling sound, with no apparent source. The power lines shake, causing Junipero to halt progress momentarily in order to maintain his grip on the line. After the rumbling ceases, Junipero continues sawing. Hang on, hang on, I've almost got… As Atlanta 9 Junipero saws through the last fibers of the rope, the noose and bindings come loose from Jackknife. The agent coughs and reaches out towards Junipero, but begins to fall upwards, away from the lines. Fuck! Jesus Christ! Diego! Atlanta 9 Diego readies another length of rope and throws it towards Jackknife, missing him by a meter. The low rumbling sound is heard again, this time mixed with more distorted laughter from below them as Jackknife continues to fall upwards. Holy shit, holy shit, help, fuck, help, somebody, please, fuck, help! Jackknife continues to ascend. From below, the distorted laughter grows louder, and is cut by a shrill, piercing sound that is vaguely feline in nature. The low rumbling begins to pulse. Diego, what do we do? God damn it! Holy shit, you guys, holy shit, I can't, I can't, oh! Above the two men on the power line, the dim stars in the sky begin to change. They grow slightly brighter and twist in on themselves, revealing many thousands, if not hundreds of thousands, of large, vaguely octopoid eyes that stretch from horizon to horizon. Jackknife is seen twisting around to face the sky. Jack! I… I am… it's everywhere… Jackknife is cut short as his body distends dramatically. As it does, the eyes in the sky glow a dark red, and then Jack Knight's body comes apart suddenly. The remaining viscera continues to ascend into the sky. After a short time, the low rumbling sound subsides, as does the distorted laughter from below. June, Diego, do you copy? Have you recovered Jack Knight? The entity in the truck has disappeared into the woods. Copy. We lost Jack Knight. Continue to rendezvous point. We'll meet you there. All members of Atlanta 9 team recovered from within SCP-3785. Due to the hazardous conditions within SCP-3785, further manned exploration is temporarily restricted. The nature of the entity observed in the sky above SCP-3785 is unknown. End log. Addendum 3785.4 Recovered cell phone data Note. The following are video and audio transcripts from data recovered from a cell phone, discovered during the events of Addendum 3785.2, belonging to Danielle Hudson, an individual believed to be lost within SCP-3785. ID number 3785.AV.01 Document Type Video Length 15 seconds Transcript Three women and two men ride in an open-top jeep down a dirt road, identified later as the access road to SCP-3785. ID number 3785.AV.02 Document Type Video Length 15 seconds Transcript A small group of young people stand around a fire. 
the woman holding the camera turns the camera to look at herself while she makes a face. Notably, headlights can be seen in the distance. ID number 3785.AV.03 Document Type Text Message Transcript Hey, are you up? Jay got stuck. We need a tow again. Out of cross planes. ID number 3785.AV.04 Document Type Phone Call Records Call to Contact Listed as J Status Could not connect. ID number 3785.AV.05 Document Type Video Length 1 minute 13 seconds Transcript Camera pans across the faces of the other missing people, all of whom appear concerned or angry. Somebody asks if anyone got a license plate number. One individual, a white male, is standing in front of a black truck, inspecting damage to its right side. Two other women are on their phones. As the camera approaches the truck, a white blazer drives by the group slowly. As it does, a dark figure can be seen staring at the group as it passes by. One of the males shout, I hope you're happy, asshole, and throws a bottle at the blazer, which disappears into the woods. ID number 3785.AV.06 Document Type Pictures Description Images of damage to the front of a truck. ID number 3785.AV.07. Document type. Pictures. Description. Single image of the top of a hill with a high voltage power line stanchion visible. No other context provided. ID number 3785.AV.08. Document type. Phone call records. Call to. 7 calls to 911. 10 calls to contact listed as Mama. Status Could not connect. ID number 3585.AV.09. Document type Video. Length 15 seconds. Transcript A white male pulls a gun and points at something off camera. He fires the weapon, but is suddenly struck by a white blazer, and both disappear off camera. A woman screams throughout. As the camera pans, both the truck and the individual cannot be seen. A strange retching sound is heard. ID number 3585.AV.10 Document Type Video Length 15 seconds Transcript A single pair of headlights are visible at a distance. A man is heard screaming incoherently, before a loud engine rev is heard and the man goes quiet. As the camera pans, a fire is visible on a hilltop. ID number 3585.AV.11 Document Type Phone Call Records Call to 15 calls to 911 Status Could not connect ID number 3585.AV.12 Document Type Text Messages Description Several text messages over half an hour, all variations of Send help or call 911. ID number 3585.AV.13. Document type Video. Length 15 seconds. Transcript An engine idling can be heard in the background. In the foreground, a woman whimpers. The lens is covered by something. From nearby, a male voice can be heard, though it is severely distorted and incoherent. The voice laughs. The retching sound from earlier can be heard. ID number 3585.AV.14 Document Type Phone Call Records Call to Unknown Number Likely a missed dial or pocket dial Status Could not connect ID number 3585.AV.15 Document Type Picture Description A single pair of headlights at a close distance no other context is given. ID number 3785.AV.16 Document Type Video Length 23 minutes Description Camera light activates, and camera is close to the ground. As the camera pans up, the face of the camera person is briefly visible, but cannot be made out. The camera person moves slowly down a dirt trail for a short distance, 
before coming out into the clearing again. Illuminated by moonlight only, a severely distorted landscape can be seen, which appears to be a canyon of impossible geological features, crisscrossed by dirt roads that at some points twist and turn upside down in a non-Euclidean fashion. The camera moves along the top of a very steep wall of the canyon and looks down below. No bottom is visible but several indistinct lights can be seen moving slowly in the darkness. Suddenly, there is the short but distinct sound of a loud engine rev, and the camera jerks to the right, where an impossibly large hill is visible in the darkness. Somehow, despite the hill seeming to be larger than the entirety of SCP-3785, its entire face is visible to the camera. On top of the hill, a single pair of bright headlights sit motionless, while a fire burns nearby. Down the hill, a single humanoid figure slowly drags two other humanoid figures towards a series of nooses. The standing figure then positions the two prone figures into the nooses by their necks, and the engine revs again. As the headlights at the top of the hill begin to back away, the two prone figures begin to rise slowly. As they rise, they begin to invert and hang up instead of down. As if the local gravity were reversed. Though this is likely due to the non-standard nature of the space within SCP-3785. The forms can be seen writhing and struggling. The headlights back out of view, and the individuals, now hanging upside down, continue to rise until they are above the power lines. The camera pans across to see dozens of other figures at first, and then potentially hundreds, all hanging upside down above the power lines. A male voice can be heard across the expanse of the hill, heavily distorted, but clearly laughing and speaking rapidly and incoherently. The camera pans back towards the humanoid figure on the hill, which is now looking up towards the hanging figures. There is a low rumbling noise, and something happens in the sky just off-screen. Suddenly, the figure jerks and looks towards the camera. The camera pulls away quickly, and the lights go out. For the next fifteen minutes of video. The only sounds that can be heard are the short, heavy breaths of the camera person, the same low pulsing sound, and the intermittent screaming of the humanoid figure. ID number 3585.AV.17 Document Type Picture Description A dark male figure, illuminated by a dim light off-camera. No other context is given. Picture was taken several days after all other documents collected from this device.